blizzard. Hello. What's going on? Well, I've come to check on some things and drop off a Corvette that, uh, well, really isn't broken. It's not broken. No, I thought it was, but it's not. I hear something spraying on the ground. Is your vet happy to see me? Mm hmm. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is a very weird but flattering angle for me, and a cool angle of this cool two-car garage right here to my left, a 1996 Buick Roadmaster Estate, fresh back from the Car Wizards after he fixed some leaks, an exhaust leak, fluid leaks, a lot of other little things, and fresh back from Van Gogh where I got some new wood trim, a complete, well, refreshing on this thing, 82,000 miles on the car, and looks, well, nearly brand new, very, very happy with it. And it looks great next to this, my 1966 Chevrolet Corvette 427 Coupe. This is the first year of the 427 big block and it is not a numbers matching car. I bought it out of a long-term slumber, actually the original motor that wasn't original car, but what it came with uh, ran, but uh, eventually exploded. But it also had a really bad vibration at high RPM. We thought it was the engine which exploded and was causing the vibration because it was unhealthy, but we put in this beautiful, correct, looking 427, a period correct, so not numbers matching obviously, but very correct. And well, there's still a vibration at higher RPM. So I've had this thing for a year. I haven't driven it very much. And really it's just been waiting its turn for other things. I wanted to enjoy it for a little bit before sending it back up. And well, you all saw it for the last year. It sat up on the lift for a year just as decoration. And I don't want to do that with my car. So we're going to drive this up to the Car Wizards today and we're going to check on some other projects. Supposedly a Beck transmission is back and ready to be installed in addition the Chevy SSR, HHR, STD, whatever it's called, is uh, almost done. It may be the easiest wrecked repair car we've ever had on the channel. So let's head up to the car wizards. I hate to admit this, but it's probably been six months since I've driven this car. Six months, but it started right up after sitting on the top of the lift for at least that long and just runs fantastic. And it's not vibrating. Maybe it is a little bit, but... 80. Okay then. Well, I must have not remembered that correctly. Either that or this car just healed itself. That's very interesting. <laughs> the car does have an incredible feel to it. Like I've said before, it's a vintage car. It definitely feels like a vintage car, but it drives a lot more modern, say, than most things of the 1960s. Say a Mustang, for example, that feels well, like an old car. This is very futuristic, but there are still a few things that I could get to the car wizard and have them fix, like the, the heater never ever worked, the radio never worked. I would like to have some tunes. Maybe I do an aftermarket Bluetooth or something. A few other little odds and ends, so there still is a reason to go to the car wizards. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not vibrating? Hello. What's going on? Well, I've come to check on some things and drop off a Corvette that, uh, well, really isn't broken. It's not broken. No, I thought it was, but it's not. I hear something spraying on the ground. Is your vet happy to see me? Mm hmm. Here, here it comes. Sorry, I guess the Corvette was excited to see you. Yeah, it's leaving a, a trail everywhere it goes. You could probably use something to catch all that because it's not overheating, it's just squirting out, huh? Yeah, I could put a catch can or reservoir or whatever right here and it'll catch that. Back in the old days, that's what they used to do. They squirted it on the ground, but mm. obviously we can't do that now. Well, I'm not here for that. I'm here for a vibration that doesn't exist. I don't know why I thought this car vibrated at a higher RPM like it did before, but it, it doesn't. It's smooth. I know the old engine vibrated because it was so screwed up. Right. Something was wrong. I, I don't know why I remembered it that way. I, 
I don't, it's, it's smooth, it's great. I mean, there's still things that need to be fixed. The heater doesn't work, which would be nice to have that going again. There's some electrical things that, that don't work, and the parking brake sticks, I actually had to go with pliers and kind of push them in to get it to fully disengage, but sometimes it's still barely touch. But the original issue that I brought it here for, well, it's not broken. Well, speaking of cars that you thought were broken but aren't, the Azure is done and there wasn't anything wrong like you thought it was either. Doesn't have a coolant leak? No. Okay. So my 2001 Bentley Azure, formerly owned by Jean-Claude Van Damme, it was, it was giving a warning for a leak. Yes, the sensor the, on the coolant reservoir that tells you there's low coolant level was bad. We were able to get it to clear the, the warning light off now. Okay. But it never was low on coolant. Interesting. All right, so just a flaky sensor. Yes. All right, well that's uh, good news. It just has the normal, probably small oil leaks that it's always had, but otherwise fine. Very, very small, not worth tearing it apart over. Okay, well I guess I can drive that home. The Range Rover is still waiting on the shifter, right? Yeah, the shift select sensor to tell the computer what gear it's in. <laughs> I went to drive it home and it went complete. it just didn't want to leave you. It went totally nuts. It, it wouldn't did. shift into gear, it wouldn't shift in reverse. I thought I was in neutral, but I was in drive. I mean, it, it went crazy and all the lights came on. It just broke again. Yeah. It's doing what Range Rovers do. And we never even had to shift her apart or even messed with that. It's wild. So the Maserati's off to the side, I see. So have you looked over the issues, like with the backup camera not working, the windshield wipers kind of only one speed? So the wiper motor is dead. The little camera module, the actual camera itself back here is dead. Really? Yep. This car's three years old. I know, but it's got 100,000 miles on it. I like, that just makes no sense. I don't know, were they stuffing meth back there or something and broke the camera and the wipers, there's no, you can't shove it in the cowling. I don't know. <sighs> I'm kind of conflicted on this car because in one sense it's incredible that it's running and driving as well as it is considering the abuse and 60,000 miles without an oil change, but mm -hmm. the fact that that kind of stuff's breaking on it, like not even three years old, that's, that's pretty sad, but they're Chrysler parts, they're yeah. not really Maserati parts. Luckily there are some people sending you some parts for free. Oh that is true, Parts Link, uh, you actually went to buy the parts and then they asked if it was for the Methrati. Yes. And then they just send it to for free. So thank you very much. You're, you're too kind. I'll put a link to their store in the description below just because that's, that's cool. And thank you so much for watching. So save a little money there. I obviously need this as well, but yep. it's coming along. Mm -hmm. We did the oil change on it and really, it's really coming along nicely. Cool. Now you told me the transmission from Rancho had come back. It had been fixed. It had a horrible fourth gear whine. Yes. You know, just brand new right out of the box, unfortunately. Have you tested it yet? We're getting it back together and we will be testing it. Okay. Well, it looks nice. It looked nice before it was all inside. Well, and I see the exhaust is on the ground. Was there something going on with that? Yeah, we're fixing a small leak over here. That was a, you remember it was a small, tiny oil leak, probably huh. right around in here. And there's tiny little head bolts that we can take care of it with. Nice. Let's cinch it down. Also, your coolant gauge didn't work. We're, that's our next step after we get this together. All right, yes, it never worked, but I wanted to drive it and anyway, now it's been a year. I guess that's the only other car that's here. And it's done. It, it's not done. It's done. I just got here. <laughs> so you got the hatch to pop without replacing the bits? Gennison was actually able to disassemble the, the latch module and rebuild it. So he put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Yeah, see, it popped. It did pop. Okay. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah. So then you put the bumper on, which, mm -hmm. well, there's a Harley Davidson fan on this used bumper. I yeah. still have to fix that. And the ABS lights off? I took the ABS module off, which is common on these, the circuit board, solder joints, crack and whatnot. I was re-soldered every joint on there. It's fixed. I, and I guess that's all that was wrong with it. Mm-hmm. This might be the easiest crash car repair ever. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I guess I need to get with a body shop. I don't know if Van Gogh's gonna do this for me because it's pretty involved body work, but I won't pick it up today. I'll take the Azure home. Do you have a bill for this one yet? I don't have a bill on this one yet, but I do have a massive bill on the Azure. All right. So, $227. Fix some wiring and we fix some brake light issue you had. Oh, a turn signal bulb. Yep. I didn't even mention that. Hmm. We found it. Okay, well that's maybe the cheapest out of this garage ever. 
I don't know of anything I can buy with that. Maybe a nice dinner? Clearly you have very expensive taste, Wizard, but I'm, I'm not complaining. I was trying to think of a theme for today's video, and there's really no theme other than me just going around and paying everybody. So I'm here to pick up the E3325i, which most of you probably don't know about. I'll, I'll show you in a little bit, but uh, the Wizard's bill was very, very kind. It was only $238, so can, oh. can you do better? Mm -hmm. What we got? $416. We're not quite $700 into the day, and we still have one more place to go, but let's check out the E30. It kind of wasn't drivable before, Johnny, with that horrible noise from the wheel bearing, so hopefully it's better. It's very quiet. Yeah, but a 1989 325i, not an IS, not an M3, obviously, with the flares, but it does sort of have a little M3 spice to it with the body kit, which is like an M Technic factory accessory. The spoiler, it was installed when the car was new, and this thing only 80 2,000 miles. It doesn't have the sport interior, just the vinyl seats, which is kind of a bummer, but otherwise really, really cool. And you just you just can't find them like these anymore. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know the car for like 15 years. Yeah. I worked on it all the time, so yeah. Well, you mentioned they were possibly selling it, so I appreciate you hooking me up. I, I don't have a use for the car, but it's cool. Flip it. I'm not gonna flip it yet. I do have a short attention span, but it needs to go to Van Gogh first because the uh, Red paint may not be showing up on film, but it is pretty faded, especially on the bumpers. And then, I guess this was a motorcycle handle that kind of just dented it down. Yeah, that was his wife. So I don't know, that can be pushed up and touched up to make it look presentable, which you'd hate to paint it because it's all original it's paint. All original. So, we'll see. Fingers crossed on Van Gogh. I would have been hearing the wheel bearing by now. And it's gone. Very, very good. And I certainly like this a lot better than my last E30 that I had on the channel, the 325iX, which uh, was all-wheel drive, and it just didn't seem very lively. The all-wheel drive had some weight, and the car, you know, every car is different when it comes to power and how they've worn, and this one, well, it just feels tight and spirited, and, well, it feels every bit of why people love these E30s. It's just, it's just a hoot. It certainly has the look, too, with that body kit of an M3, but for obviously a fraction of the money. Shouldn't have shifted one-handed there in a turn. But anyway, let's head over to Van Gogh. <laughs> awesome car. Well, the ending for my video has sort of blown up, unfortunately. I've been waiting for over a week to post this video and the 928 is still not done yet. It's kind of the perfect storm over at Van Gogh. They're having some staffing issues. They had a hailstorm, so a lot of PDR work. And then the paint just won't match on the 928, which is a little scary. Hopefully, they're able to get it soon. So that sort of blew up the end of my video. Do I delay? Do I skip and miss a Wednesday when all you guys have to watch is Amber Heard and Johnny Depp updates? My dog stepped on a bee. That, that kind of stuff. So I decided rather than shell this video, I do a little Q&A update with you guys. And a lot of you are asking for an update on my life and how things are going. And well, things are going great. Here's Liam. He is now two years old, so time certainly flies. He is obsessed with cars, which really he had no choice but to be. He'll probably be a big sports guy when he grows up. But right now he's into cars. Who's that? Lightning McQueen, he whispered it. But yes, he has Lightning McQueen and The King. He loves the Cars movies. He loves all the cars in here. I am a racetrack currently, but I have questions that you will have sent over other than general how's life going. And well, here they are. The first one is ZDAT240. He's asking, when are we gonna see some classic JDM? Which kind of ties into All Knower who asked the favorite car that I've sold after having it on the channel. So I had an Acura NSX very early into the channel and I love the car. I regret selling it, but views wise, it totally bombed. This was a huge purchase for me early into the channel's you know, history and was really hoping that it would help a lot. And obviously buying a reliable Japanese product doesn't do very well for this brand. So the videos weren't very good, I guess. People didn't watch them and so I sold it. And that's why I don't buy Japanese cars that often is because, well, they're too darn good and reliable and, well, not exciting. And you're getting really heavy. So let's shift arms here into the next question. And that is, from Matt White 06. I'm assuming you could retire today. What are your future goals and how do you stay motivated working so hard when you could take it easy and still be happy? Well, I, I can't retire today. I'm still the hamster on the wheel and that's how I make money is making these YouTube videos. That's what pays for all these cars. I'd love to get to a point where there's enough, I don't know, passive income to where I could, you know, enjoy all these cars and not have the pressure to make a YouTube video to keep them. But Really, I've done so many things in my life. A car dealer, 
uh, flipping burgers, opening restaurants, <laughs> excuse you, so many things that uh, this really doesn't feel like a job to me at all. I've had plenty of jobs, good and bad, and I, I know what those are, and this certainly doesn't feel like it. I'd love to do this until I die, really. Acosta A2 asks, what car have you bought that was a total loss you wish wasn't a total loss? Well, uh, definitely the Chrysler LeBaron early on. That was one. I'm really sad to see that one go. If you guys have forgotten, I buried it in a hole and that was the only thing I could do with it because it was just so rusty and too far gone, even though the seller said it had no rust. And then the other one most recently is the Audi R8, which uh, thankfully I was able to shuffle that off to another YouTuber, Freddy Tavares Hernandez, the YouTube of Cars uh, Pooper Scooper, and we actually traded for something. I'm staring at the trade right now. You'll see that in a future video. Pavlodactyl asks, would you ever import a quirky European hoopty? Oh no, you dropped the king. Um, and actually that is the theme for our next car trek. We did import uh, three cars from overseas. Uh, the original car that I bought, didn't show up in time, so I had to buy another car in a hurry so it could get here. Shipping issues are so expensive and it takes so long. Okay, you can go pick up the car that it was really uh, kind of down to the wire on that. So now I have two cars that I bought for a car check. We ended up only using one. You'll see them here shortly. Hey, buddy. And then David Roddick, Table Tennis Challenge 2022, asked, uh, 2009 Porsche Cayman, not the S, or 2009 base model Corvette. So I'd say the Corvette all day long, the Cayman. It's cool, but they have a lot more issues and Corvettes. Well, I was selling those new back in 2007, so I'm a little biased, but I really like the C6 Corvette. And generic name asks, thoughts on the current used car market currently? I guess I'll end on that one. And well, if you can avoid buying a used car right now, I would say uh, certainly don't buy one unless it's something that you really, really want or, you know, it's something really special and old and depreciated. There's certainly some opportunities out there, cars I think they're gonna increase in value, but generic used cars that are way up because of low inventory and the supply chain problems and all the new cars, you'd be absolutely insane to buy a car right now. So you absolutely should not, but uh, as far as the prices being here to stay, I think prices on cars will go up and collector cars like these expensive things behind me that have appreciated are probably gonna stay that way, at least fingers crossed for me. So thank you so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to Hoovy's Garage. Do it right now. Yes, you must do it. Do it, please. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Liam, can you say thank you for watching? Thank you for watching. Good job. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Your headlights are on. Super duper, come let's mix where Rockefellers walk with sticks all on the rellas in their midst. Don't forget your keys.